Hi, my name is Anna Husakovic and I'm a software developer in the MariaDB Foundation. Today we will be speaking about the first steps to get into development of the MariaDB server. And I mean development of the MariaDB server itself, not applications based on the MariaDB server. That said, one of the key reasons why you would want to develop uh, the server itself is to simplify your application development by extending the functionality of uh, MariaDB server. That is an option you usually do not have with other proprietary databases, but MariaDB is an open source database with the code repository on the GitHub. This tutorial is for the beginners and we will see how to get the source code, how to configure and compile the builds and uh, at the end how to write the tests. So let's get started. So first step is to get the source code. To get the source code, go to the MariaDB server GitHub page and click on button clone or download. Copy to the URL and make sure you have Git installed. We will install Git. Okay. And we will clone the branch 10.5 and paste the link. This will take several minutes, depending on uh, internet connection. But let's explain the uh, meaning of the releases. So, MariaDB server has uh, several releases. Uh, releases are branches and uh, they can be found in GitHub uh, repository, like 10.4, for example here and so on. 5.5 uh, and 10.0 are uh, at the end of live dates, but 10.1 till 10.5 are uh, still there and uh, currently 10.5 is the development branch. So we are using this branch uh, in this tutorial. Okay, download is complete. And uh, we can see that there is the server uh, folder, which has also a lot of subdirectories. But one specific file of interest is cmakelists.txt, and this file will take us to the next stage, and this is compiling, uh, configuring and compiling the builds. Uh, before configuring the builds, we need to install some dependencies. So just run the command sudo apt install and these packages that we that we will need okay to create a build configuration our files mariadb is using a cmake so we will also need to install uh, cmake and we can check for the version cmake version is currently 3.16. Okay. Uh, CMake is by default controlled by the files called uh, CMake lists, and uh, we there they can be find, found here, but also in other uh, various folders of the source code directory. So we can grab for them, and we can see there are a lot of them. Okay. Uh, often you will hear the terms in-source and out-of-source uh, builds. For the sake of the time and to simplify the tutorial, we will be using in-source builds, meaning that all binaries will be in the same directory as the source code. So the command to run the CMake is CMake, uh, exe executable, dot, like we are using the source code directory, and we will also use additional flag flags, uh, the CMake build type equals debug so that means that we will uh, not use we will, we will not using the optimized uh, builds but we will create the symbol tables for the binaries and um, by default it is uh, released with uh, debug info so if we omitted this flag and also we will disable some plugins uh, plugins are by default enabled and plugins are uh, server components that enhance uh, MariaDB 
Uh, they can be the storage engines, uh, full text search, or even some user-defined user uh, plugins. So uh, CMake command for that is uh, called uh, uh, CMake pl uh, plugin. Uh, and the name of the plugin, for example, uh, tokudb equals, uh, we want to disable it, so we'll just write no. And uh, to disable multiple plugins, we can write D, uh, plugin, plugin uh, underscore and curly braces and write the plugins we want to disable. So for example, Merunga, uh, DB connect, Sphinx, Spider, uh, Archive, uh, Opal Graph equals no. And this is this will also take some time. Okay, now configuration is done with the configuration files written to the source code uh, directory, so we can see a lot of them. And uh, to check for the options, we can use uh, multiple ways. So one of the way, ways to check is. Uh, See my cache file, cache file, so this file, and uh, we can see here that uh, build type uh, is equal debug. That, for example, uh, plugin underscore rocks db is configured as no, so we will not use. And uh, here are the set of options which we can use and so on. Uh, another alternative is uh, to run the CMake with uh, dash LH options. So it will list options with the descriptions, all descriptions, so we can also check here. Or if you want some uh, terminal GUI based view, you need to install sudo app install CMake versus GUI and you can run the cc make uh, dot to have this nice terminal GUI view. Okay, after proper configuration uh, we need to compile the binaries. This can be done with the make tool so we can run the make and specify the number of uh, jobs and uh, I will use for example 8 jobs uh, to have the faster builds. The recommended number of uh, is number of CPUs plus one. Okay, now we have the uh, all binaries in the uh, current directory and uh, among, among the set of the binaries we will just uh, explore the SQL folder, so this folder and uh, we will grab for MySQL D and this is the server binary, uh, very important and also we will just check for uh, MySQL uh, binary in the client folder and these are all, those are all clients and this is one of the most important binaries. Okay, uh, to bypass this usage of the CMake you have alternative, uh, you can from this directory build uh, there are a lot of uh, scripts that you can run but we will not cover this in this uh, tutorial. Okay, so we can just check the type of the binary we, we, we got. So go to the SQL folder and execute MySQL D with dash V and you will, you will have this dash debug at the end saying that we have uh, compiled the bi binary in debug, debug build type. Okay, so let's let's start running the test now. To run the test, MariaDB has a testing framework in a MySQL test folder called MySQL test run and uh, it, it is abbreviated as MTR which is also a symlink. 
uh, which is generated. The working principle is that MySQL test client program reads uh, test files as an inputs and sends SQL commands to MariaDB server. Uh, test files are located in uh, suites. Uh, we have this suite directory and almost always uh, name of directory is the name of the suites except in case of main suite which is located in MySQL test, uh, MySQL test directory. Uh, MTR also supports the overlays. Uh, overlays are uh, subdirectories of MySQL test in plugin and storage uh, directories, but we'll, it will, they will not be covered here. Okay, so let's try to inspect some uh, suite. For example, functions one suite, and we have the uh, tr include uh, directories that are of interest. Uh, t directory uh, has uh, test test files uh, with extension dot test uh, result files have uh, dot result uh, files and uh, include uh, directories have configuration files for any other files that should be included with the source command to uh, test. In general, uh, each test can be included from anywhere, but there is a convention that uh, suite has this include folder. Okay. So to run the MTR, uh, navigate to MySQL test and execute uh, MTR dash dash help or uh, run with the Perl MySQL test and help. Okay, now uh, let's try to run some specific test. Uh, run MTR and for example name of the test is you grant. Uh, MTR will create var directory, install some system tables and will show us that uh, in suite name uh, main we have u brand test that passed. Uh, optionally, there can here can be other parameters like um, combinations, but we will not cover this here. So to run multiple tests, we can just specify them. For example, uh, information schema columns in different suite, like here functions one suite, and and so on. Uh, to run all tests from a specific suite, we can specify suite equal, for example, main, but this this can take time, and uh, we can also specify with other parameter if it's parallel to have uh, multiple uh, multiple uh, tests uh, running parallel. This also think, can take time, and uh, we can specify dash dash man, uh, which will force to use uh, uh, virtual RAM disk. Uh, if there is sufficient RAM, uh, and we can see what is happening here. It is collecting all the tests, install the system databases, and it is running with uh, this worker one, two, and so on. Uh, let's now try to uh, create artificial uh, failure, for example, in main IPv4 and IPv6 test. We will delete this column and uh, we will run this IPv4 and IPv6 test. Uh, this test uh, will fail and the result is like so. Okay, and in the end we are say, uh, we got the summary results. So now in order to run uh, all suites, uh, all tests from one suite, <coughs> this will fail because we have test that is failing in one suite. In order to override this, we need to use dash dash force option, which will force MTR to proceed uh, after uh, failure. The reason for that is because of uh, flag max test fail, which is by default set to 10, which means that it will allow up to 10 failures before MTR aborts. And uh, if you want to override uh, with no limits, we set this flag to zero. So one uh, specific command to run all suits and all tests is like so. Okay, now let's write our uh, custom test case and see how the result files are created. So I have already created one MariaDB foundation test. Uh, it is using this echo command, uh, which is sending this string to standard output using some database, create a table, insert values, selecting and yet at the end uh, dropping the table. Uh, we can run this test as MDPF. MTR MDBF and uh, we see the test is good 
and in order to record this test and uh, to have the result file which we can share with, with other uh, people we just need to sub, sub, uh, apply dash dash record okay and uh, it will save result file in the same suite uh, where the test is created this is the main suite and if we expect if we inspect and uh, grab for mdbf we will see there is the result file and uh, test file we can also cut mdbf result and see the same result as above that's it for now thanks for watching and see you in the next video